Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotion. It is Friday, July 9th. Uh, we're going to keep doing these devotions at uh, 8 o'clock each morning. Uh, we won't be switching back and forth like we did there for a while. Uh, I feel privileged. Good morning, Mary. I feel privileged to be able to do these devotions, to, uh, to lead you in a time with the Lord. Uh, I just believe that it's so important so important to our faith, so important to keeping our faith alive and strong. I tell you all the time, Romans ten seventeen, your faith grows just from hearing God's word. So we're in Matthew 28, one of the most significant events in history taking place. Let me read it. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them, greeting, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, where they will see me. Jesus rising from the dead. This has so much significance for us, uh, not just for them at that time. Uh, it has incredible significance for us. Uh, look what it says here in 1 Corinthians. Uh, it says, um, Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Death has been swallowed up in, in victory. You see, for most people, death is just the, 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 final, the final thing. It's just, it's just so final. It's like, it's, I don't know if you've ever gone to many funerals. Uh, good morning, John. Good morning, Lily. I've gone to so many funerals, especially for unbelievers, where they're weeping and wailing because it's like they're never going to see that person again. It's just so final for them. But for us who believe in Jesus... It, 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 is, it, it, it took the sting out of death. It took the sting out of death. That, that's so important, so important. Uh, uh, this would never have happened had Jesus not rose from the dead. So there's two significant events in, in the history. Is Jesus dying on that cross? Because when he died on that cross, he paid the price for our sins so that we could be in the presence of God. Remember that... The, the curtain of the temple ripping in two, signifying that we now can go into the very presence of God. We, you, right, right now we are in the presence of God. We're reading his word. We're, we're, we're listening to what God has to say. Uh, when we talk, when we pray, when we talk, he, he's listening. He promises to listen to us. So Jesus dying on the cross and then Jesus rising from the, from the grave are two significant events in the, in the history of mankind. In 1 Corinthians 15, it, goes, it, it tells us this also in verses 3 and 4. It says, For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the Scriptures. The most importance, first importance, that, Christ, that Jesus died on the cross and that he rose from the dead. And then there's even a third significant event when is, is his promising to give us his Holy Spirit. Uh, in 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians, oh, let me, let me, I, uh, I took the marker out. Hold on a second here. 2 Corinthians one twenty four. Oh, 122, there we go. He set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing 
what is to come. Jesus set his seal of ownership in, on us. He, he gave us his Holy Spirit, guaranteeing, guaranteeing what is to what is to come. In Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, it tells, it tells us this. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having believed you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those of God, God's possession to the praise of his glory. So three major events. Jesus dying on the cross, Jesus raising from the dead, and then him giving us his Holy Spirit, guaranteeing us eternal life. You all watching this now, Mary, John, Lily, Marcy, you, you have that Holy Spirit living within you. What does that Holy Spirit mean? It means that you too, just like Jesus rose from the dead, that you too will rise from the dead. In fact, Jesus tells us that we will never die. Those who believe in us will never die. I've shared with you many times that when we die, our spirit goes to be with the Lord. But then one day we receive a new body that he promised us. This is why, this is why the disciples could not stop talking about Jesus. They couldn't, this, these events drastically changed their lives, drastically changed our lives. Listen here in Acts 5.42. It says, day after day, in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. They never stopped talking about it. They were persecuted and yet continued to keep on talking about it. In 4.20 it says, For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. We can't help it. We, we seen Jesus dying on the cross. We seen Jesus rise from the dead. He, he, he met with us. He talked with us. We seen him. We can't stop talking about that. Oh, I, I pray that each of us can say that same thing, that we can't stop talking about these three major events in our, in our life because they are just so, so important. This is why God tells us in Romans Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Then how can they call on the one whom they've not believed in? Question mark. How can they believe in the one whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without someone telling them? Are you excited enough to tell others about the Lord? Are you excited enough to share the good news to as many people as you possibly can? I pray that God will raise up more, more people, more churches that will share the gospel message so that unbelievers have an opportunity to, to hear about these three significant things that you and I know that hopefully we don't just take for granted. That hopefully we'd, uh, it's, it would be like, like you knowing where the, where the best I, I play with my grandchildren all the time where I know the best places to go with my grandchildren, but I don't tell other parents or grandparents about them. If you find a good place for you to take your grandchildren, you tell your others. Like recently we've been taking my grandchildren to a, to a park in, uh, in Brea, Craig Park. And it's got a dam there, and we climb up the rocks, and we go over to the other side, and we come down, and we, we go down a steep incline down to where the little stream is down there, and we catch little fish that we can feed to our, to our, to, to, to the ducks and the, and everything else, the turtles, the, the, the frogs, everything that we got raised in my backyard. I, I, I tell other people about that. Well, what's more significant, Craig Park or Jesus rising from the dead? Ugh. People may have heard about it, but do they believe it? Do they see the excitement in us? They need to see that excitement. Uh, I, my, my, prayer, my prayer is that more churches, more churches would, would reach the lost. I would pr I pray that collision goes back to the day when we were able to reach lost people. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for the day that the youth groups will bring in their friends 
so their friends can hear these things. I pray that God would use these video messages more and more and more to, to let people out there in video land know about the significance of what it means that Jesus died on the cross, that he rose from the dead, and that he gave us his Holy Spirit. Three major events in history. Amen. Thank you for watching. I'll see many of you tomorrow morning at, uh, at 8 o'clock again. Have a great day and share this if it means something to you. That's the least we can do. Amen. See you tomorrow.